Thank you. I guess, good afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Farshid Sabat. Uh, I'm responsible for the uh, Vision Markets uh, business at, uh, at Intel um, within the IoT uh, group. Um, and uh, I've been with various different startups. Uh, my company was acquired by Intel uh, a few years ago. Um, and I've been with uh, various different startup companies beforehand. Uh, but anyway, uh, the discussion today is about uh, uh, AI and uh, IoT. Um, in my position, I'm in an enviable um, position to, um, to see so many innovative uh, companies who are developing AI at the edge uh, for various different applications, various different geographies. And uh, what we see uh, in the market, there are different ways to be able to implement uh, uh, AI uh, in, in your applications, uh, ranging from the, uh, on the data center and going to the big cloud uh, to various different uh, components of the edge for the deployments and as well as on the device and things. And we see that intelligence everywhere is increasing. We see AI is deployed not only uh, uniquely in any uh, of these nodes, everywhere uh, intelligence uh, increases. Uh, is driven by the tremendous amount of data that is generated and intelligence how um, uh, various different needs for the applications. But the question is that where is the right place to be able to deploy the AI? Do we, uh, do, we do it all on the cloud and uh, make the devices dumb uh, or a combination of that uh, less reliance on the cloud and more on the edge and things? And there's no uh, single answer. There is not a a single uh, solution to uh, any of these implementations. It really depends on uh, what the needs are in terms of latency, what the needs are in terms of privacy, uh, in terms of uh, cost and uh, total cost of ownership and system implementations, and where the, the data it gets implemented. From where we see, um, there, there's a tremendous level of activities happening on the what we call on the edge side, uh, which is devices on the, uh, on the premise, on the uh, local uh, uh, places of where the data is generated, as well as on the devices. And we see that uh, a lot of market research reports also showing the similar uh, data. That is, a lot of the growth is happening on the edge uh, side. Uh, we see that the uh, all the cameras, all the devices are getting smarter, all the edge uh, inference devices are being included, as well as obviously the clouds are getting smarter. You see that you use it every day with the, uh, the applications that are out there. Um, I don't, we saw some great presentations this morning and many of you guys are involved in uh, shaping and forming this industry. Uh, we see the application of, of AI ranging from making the cities smarter by, uh, by providing safety in factories, by making the systems or factories uh, workers more productive. Uh, uh, in automotive, obviously, we see a lot of uh, activities in that area to make sure the cars are more autonomous and more moving toward the directions of have more intelligence in terms of viewing and the ability to park and drive and so forth. In the industrial applications, my colleagues are here, we see tremendous level of work and activities going on in industrial applications, helps with productivity, helps with the worker safeties, uh, and uh, in, in casino gamings, uh, we see this in retail uh, is being deployed in extremely creative and many, many different applications that you are involved with and some of you are showing up here from automations and other type of applications. Uh, so the challenges for us for the deployment and uh, uh, for us to be part of Intel, we see that uh, many, many um, uh, businesses uh, want to move into AI. There's not a business that it cannot, doesn't want to take advantage of uh, this trend to, into the AIs. There are a lot of factors involved in terms of some to do with uh, system designs, how to make sure that, uh, uh, again, factors that are involved with um, uh, 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 privacy, uh, latency, system performance is done. There's some environments that is, if you're in the traffic control, 
The latency is extremely critical. You have to be able to make decisions very fast. Other environments, uh, if you're designing an application that requires a, a camera, security and privacy may be more important and so forth. Uh, in terms of um, uh, applications, uh, as we talked about this, there seems like there's a myth or there's a big uh, component of this. You need to have hire a lot of smart uh, machine learning engineers who are very short uh, and scarce in, in terms of availability. Uh, and uh, it's actually it's a, it's a difficulty for a lot of companies to be able to get into these aspects. So ability for a lot of the companies have access to this, to the data, access to the algorithms is important. Uh, software uh, to allows the, for the implementation has to be easy to use uh, to, for the applications to be able to take advantage of these into their environments. And for us, very important to make sure that we democratize the environment, the ecosystem, that we can uh, apply the learning from uh, uh, that is uh, done in academics or various different industries can be applied everywhere. Obviously, with the importance of your privacy uh, of the customers or the partners who are developing this application are preserved. But there are two components to, uh, to AI. There is uh, algorithm implementations uh, that requires machine learning experts and then the data. So a lot of people move uh, uh, their, their IP and the protection into any of those uh, specific areas. For us, um, what we see um, uh, from Intel side, uh, we see the application ranges from, from the very low power to very high performance to very customizable to something that is easy and generic to use. Uh, so we have applications or processors that address each of these markets. For if you're developing um, AI or deploying AI in the, uh, in the smart cameras, power and uh, energy becomes very important. Whereas if your uh, applications are in the data centers, obviously the performance and the latency are more important. So we, we have various different uh, processors and CPUs that cover from the uh, devices to the edge to the data center that covers any of the workloads and the needs. And every year for each of these, uh, every 12 months to 18 months, we have refresh uh, of the new products that every uh, cycle you will see more AI and more features and more capabilities embedded. And then uh, on top of that, we have families of uh, devices that are known as accelerators. Either these are um, uh, in terms of field programmable uh, gate arrays, FPGA type of products, or VPU uh, type of products, or vision processor units products, or accelerator cards, vision accelerator cards that we have that allows as an accompanying to existing system by, by providing um, uh, more um, uh, intelligence uh, for the environments. Those of you who are in the software, those of you who are in the implementation, this is all fine and dandy, but the problem with this is that how do you get this thing implemented? Software becomes a critical component of this because if you, you hire people, not only they have machine learning experience or expertise, that's hard enough to get, then you have people that have expertise in either DSP or GPU or CPU or VPU or any of these new type of products, and then you have to teach you have to make sure you hire uh, layers of, of engineers to have expertise in this area. This is an area we have been thinking very hard and we have been working with our partners. The answer to this is uh, a software uh, toolkits uh, that we have um, made available as known as OpenVINO uh, that allows uh, uh, inference at the edge uh, implementation. Uh, the, the design of this software package has been that it works with any of these uh, uh, architectures. Abstract the architecture, you don't have to be expert in each of these uh, specific uh, products. Uh, allows uh, optimal performance for each of these environments as opposed to you handcraft and you uh, get into the low level to be able to do the program is you want to, we want to make sure we provide the support that you can get to the high level of performance but not knowing the details of these uh, devices and, and architectures. And uh, what is important uh, uh, for some of you who 
are familiar with, uh, if you have own uh, end-to-end systems, you want to be able to develop solutions that could be deployed from the data center to the edge and to the device all at once. You don't want to develop only something that is developed for one of the nodes, and then it will make it difficult for you to be able to move from one to the others, because you may have applications uh, that, uh, that, that needs for the system cost. You may have a lower cost system that relies more on the edge device, whereas you have uh, other systems that are more distributed that requires more on the cloud side, but you don't want to redesign your networks at once. This is uh, OpenVINO toolkits is designed uh, for this purpose. Last, I uh, wanted to uh, also mention uh, how um, you will uh, implement uh, this is important. You Usually the way it works is that there is a network uh, that uh, does a specific AI function. It could be a face detection, it could be a license plate recognitions, or it could be any, any, other, uh, any other applications. We, um, we will uh, train this networks to be for the optimal case, and usually that's that optimal um, uh, environment is uh, when depends on where it's deployed will change. If it is uh, designed into an if it has to be deployed into an environment that is very low power and resource constraint, like a small camera, obviously the network has to be uh, optimized and pruned to be able to fit within that application. If the design uh, of the network is uh, targeted for application that is high uh, for very low latency, the network has to be uh, optimized for that environment. The third stage is uh, deploying uh, this, uh, and obviously after the deployment, the productization. For each of these, we have uh, various different products and solutions that provide the support for you. For training, for instance, we have uh, processors that are designed for the training and ability to be able to uh, train with the software. Uh, for optimization uh, of the networks, we have this, uh, whether you locally you decide to do this with this uh, uh, USB device that we introduced several years ago, neural compute stick, uh, that uh, allows you to be able to prune and optimize your network. And um, also we will introduce other products of that nature uh, that uh, allows um, um, very, various different ways for the pruning and optimization to take place. We have uh, various different hardware accelerators with various different partners and uh, ODMs that we are working with that they have boxes that are developed that have uh, scalability uh, in terms of how many, how much performance and power and other uh, system constraints that you would like to uh, have it enabled, that all of those are available, part of this kit. And Intel has uh, various different um, solutions in AI in productions and market-ready solutions and uh, other kits that are available that you can get access and all of these things come ready for this. So this is, uh, I didn't want to make it a very detailed presentation, but the point was that uh, for you who have uh, creative ideas, uh, we want to make sure you focus on developing your creative ideas to move your solutions from the uh, fantastic work you're doing into more AI enabled. And we are here as your partner to be able to make this uh, happen.